Hey guys, welcome to today's Vehicle Visionary. Today, I am at Jimmy Grange Ford Lincoln in Natchitoches, Louisiana. Normally you see me at Jimmy Grange Ford up in Stonewall, but because I had a request to feature a Lincoln Aviator here on the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel, I traveled down here to Natchitoches, about an hour south of Shreveport, and that's exactly what we're going to look at today. So I gotta say thanks to the viewer who requested this video. Hopefully it's helpful in making your decision on whether or not this is something you want to purchase. The Aviator is in its second year. It was originally introduced as a 2020 model. This is a 2021 we're going to look at today. Not a lot of changes, really just a few changes to some of the options and the packages within the multiple trim levels. And speaking of those trim levels, let's list those on the screen and their base prices. And just a little note of interest. Depending on what you want, whether you want two-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, there are some options there. On the standard and reserve trim levels, you have the option of either two-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, but once you step up beyond those first two trim levels, everything comes standard all-wheel drive. And we'll talk a little bit more about the engine and transmission that is standard across the board with these aviators and these are some very nice high-end luxurious models a lot of great features and i can't wait to show you the infotainment system because there are some very easy tricks i get a lot of questions about how does this work and how does that work i like what lincoln has done to make it very easy with animated tutorials and information on the screen depending on whether you want to learn about something in particular how to use it even if the vehicle has it. But we'll take a look at that when we hop into the interior in just a minute. But let's start with our exterior tour first. Okay guys, let's get started here. Just a quick look at the exterior. Just a somewhat of a walk around from one side of the aviator here, just so you can see what's here. Before we actually begin talking about the exterior features, and options, a very nice looking vehicle. Something that Lincoln is definitely known for is luxurious vehicles. The Aviator logo prominently displayed here on the front fenders. And I like the overall design here of the hood. As you can see, it definitely has some character with all of the different lines and the shape here. It's not too much. In fact, if we had a darker color, you'd probably be able to see that a little bit better. But I like what I see here with the front grille. Of course, you've got quite a bit of air going in for that three liter six cylinder, definitely not hurting for horsepower. But do you notice the common denominator here on the grille? Well, of course, you've got the Lincoln logo right here and right under that is the front camera and that does have a front camera washer. I'll show you how to use that in just a little bit. But if you look over the entirety of the grille, you can see the logo everywhere. That's basically what these shapes are right here is the logo right in the middle. You do have the LED fog lights down there on the lower portion of the front bumper and you have full LED headlights. Definitely not gonna have any trouble. Those are adaptive headlights, by the way. And one thing I was talking about earlier about the features and functionality of the vehicle. If you want to know about something in particular and you're saying, well, how does that work and how you can look at that, you actually have those visual displays within the infotainment screen, including how those adaptive headlights work. And there is your remote. If you wanted to know what that looks like, basically the same thing we've seen with all of the other Ford trucks and SUVs that we've done in the past, but just so you can see how that looks. You do have the heated power folding side view mirrors. Turn signal indicator is built in, of course. And if you're not used to something like this, you're gonna walk up here and probably try and pull on the door handle. Well, actually, the release is inside the door handle. You just pull on that or push on that, essentially, is what I should say. We'll take a closer look at the interior shortly. And one thing I like, when it comes to looking at designs and features, you've got these 22 inch wheels and I like that kind of almost fan type effect. Maybe we can mount the GoPro on this model in such a way where you can kind of get a little bit of a look as to what that looks like when they're actually turning as we drive around in the aviator. And you've got, of course, the chrome trim around the windows, the roof rails up there. There is a panoramic sunroof that we'll take a closer look at in just a little while. And looking here at the rear, again, 
it might sound kind of funny, but when you look at these tail lights, that actually looks pretty elegant. Again, not something that's out of the ordinary for Lincoln. You've got the quad tip exhaust here on the rear. And of course, you're going to have that shark fin up there on the top, the rear roof spoiler to help channel the air over the rear window. And I like the fact you do have a rear window wiper that is concealed here, basically inside the rear roof spoiler. And here's a quick look into the rear cargo area. I will put the numbers on the screen as far as what you have. And of course, you can maximize your cargo space by lowering those rear seats. And as you can see, you've got some buttons right here that allow you to do just that. Let's see if we can get those to go down for you real quick. And there you go. You can see that you can lower those seats and then, of course, bring those back up at the same time. Actually very quick to come up. I like how quick that is. I've been, used other vehicles for videos in the past that had some seats that were very slow to move. They will go down automatically. And of course, you do have a power lift gate here with the option to close and or close and lock the rear lift gate if you wish to do that. And we'll work our way around into the interior right here. The passenger side door in the rear of the aviator and just very, very tastefully designed interior as you can just see looking here at the door panel. Now, one thing you're going to notice, this is very similar to the C7 and C8 generation Corvettes, actually, where you don't really have a door handle to pull on right there. You just push the button right here and that's what's going to open the door. And just a quick look into the interior right here from this angle show you what's here. Of course, you're going to have quad zone climate control. You're going to have climate control available here in the rear. And just looking around, let me get that armrest out of the way. Again, very tastefully done as far as all of the features and the functionality here and just the way everything is laid out. And when it comes to moving the seat out of the way, well, it's that easy to do that. And to show you what's in the back seat area right here, you do have air conditioning vents and some cup holders back here in the rear. And as you can see, you do have shades that are available to put in place if you wish to, at least your rear seat passengers wish to. And one thing I did want to show you right here, I couldn't show you earlier because the ignition was not on. What are these two buttons for right here? That is actually for if your rear seat passengers want to close the shade partially on the panoramic sunroof, well, they can close that and or open that. And I did want to turn on the ignition so you could see everything that you have here as far as the different options for your rear seat passengers. That's not just for controlling the air conditioner. And of course, as you can see, you've also got heated seats here in the rear, not only heated, but ventilated as well. Something we don't always see for the rear seat passengers. So if you want one or the other, or the rear seat passengers want one or the other, well, there are those options. And connectivity down here on the lower portion. I don't know how well you can see that. It's kind of hard to get that in just the right place. But there we go. So you've got your USB ports. You've got USB ports on this side and a power outlet right here on the right hand side. So some nice options where that is concerned. So let's start our front seat tour by taking a look at the panel on the passenger side door. And as you can see, a very similar system here for adjusting the power seats right here on the door. Very similar to those Mercedes that we often look at here on the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel. Got that piano black finish here and a very good sound system here. Still something I need to work on being able to demonstrate here without getting hit by copyright issues with YouTube. Something you got to be careful of, but we'll see what we can do about that in the future. Now, as far as space goes, there's a very unique storage space right here. Nothing out of the ordinary, but depending on what you want to fit right there, well, obviously that is available. Very comfortable seats, to say the very least. Of course, if the back seats are heated and ventilated, well, so are the front seats. And just a little bit better look at the panoramic sunroof. 
And as we take a look at the driver's side door panel, you're not going to have a whole lot here that you didn't have on the passenger side. Seat memory, but one thing that you will find here that I'm surprised isn't on all four doors. I couldn't find any other area to do this other than here on the driver's side. So if the battery dies, remember, this is how you open all four doors. You push the button right there. You could hear it releasing right there so that it would allow you to get out. So what happens if the battery dies? Well, right down here is a manual release that you can pull on. But I only found that on the driver's side door. Kind of an interesting thing. I guess everybody else is just going to have to climb over the seats. Hopefully they're agile enough to do that. And just a quick look here at what we have as far as the interior goes from the driver's side. Now, I do want to hop in here and let you get a good look. Let's see if I can do this. The start button is right there, as you can see, right up here. So what I'm going to do is I want you to be able to see, hopefully, both screens at the same time. Let's see if I can manipulate myself to pull this off so you can see the graphics that come up on not only the dashboard, but on the infotainment screen as well. So there's what you have as far as your dashboard goes. Very well laid out. Steering wheel mounted controls and a very comfortable leather wrapped steering wheel as you would expect. And quite a few nice features here. You have voice commands right here. If you're wondering what that is, that's what that button is for. You can hit that and you'll see speak now right there on the infotainment screen. Now I'm going to go out of that. We're going to cancel that just so you can see what is there. Of course, the other steering wheel mounted controls, as you would expect, you do have shifter paddles there on the steering wheel. So if you want to take advantage of that 400 horsepower engine that is under the hood, the three liter mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission. Well, depending on what mode you wish to drive in, which by the way, here is your mode selector. You're going to turn that and actually push down on the button right there. And here's what's going to happen on the screen when you start changing driving modes. We'll run through a few of those so you can see there is excite mode. And so we'll get out on the road and see how exciting that really is in a little while. But I would imagine it's quite fun with 400 horsepower, just so you can kind of see a few things here. And deep conditions. It almost looks like that's a smoking tire there. Now, with all-wheel drive, you're not going to be able to smoke the tires, but maybe you have a two-wheel drive version, you may have that opportunity. And we'll get back to the screen in just a second here, but I must say I really like that 10-inch screen right there. Here is the shifter right here. That's right. You know, we've looked at some other models that are in competition with the Aviator, and the shifter isn't located in this position. Took a little getting used to for me personally. Once I did that a couple of times, put it into reverse and drive and park, not a big deal. So don't let that scare you off by any means. And like I said, quad zone and climate control. So you've got dual zone in the rear, dual zone here in the front. Like I said, there are your heated and ventilated seats. I like the fact that it's not just here in the front, but in the rear as well. And more connectivity right here. You've got storage space that you can conceal away if you want to. Of course, also your beverage holders right there. You can conceal that away. Power parking brake. And let's see if I can finagle things to show you what is actually here inside the center console pretty deep. Got plenty of space right there, some nice storage. And if you're looking for wireless charging right here, let's see if I can do this one handed. I think I can pretty easily. And hopefully you can see the phone come on. There you go. The phone is now charging. Probably not the best angle for that, but that just happens to be where I'm sitting right now. And if you're wondering how to control the power shade and the sunroof, you do have an sunroof that will open at least partially that panoramic sunroof up there those are the controls for that but let's talk a little bit more about the infotainment screen and i like the fact that it's pretty simple to figure out you can see these dots down here that says you have three different screens you can scroll your way through everything you would expect here you can make a lot of adjustments and customization to the vehicle depending on what you wish to do. Of course, that is not the outside temperature. It's 41 degrees today. This is the interior temperature based on how the controls are set here with the dual zone climate control. But with everything being here as it is, I really like one of the main features right here. Let's get back here and we're going to go to vehicle. 
So let's just say you wanted to go into lighting and make some adjustments. And like I said, you have adaptive headlamps. You're going to push this little icon here to the right and it's going to actually give you a full on demonstration of exactly what that is. So as you can see, when you drive around a corner, those adaptive headlights are going to literally turn with the vehicle. And you can do that throughout every area. And it's not that I don't want you to watch my videos with tutorials, but I don't have everything set here as far as all the different settings and features and everything. So if you want tutorials, you don't have to go to YouTube. You can actually go right to the infotainment screen here in the aviator to find that. And everything that you would expect to see here, pretty self-explanatory and easy to figure out. But one thing about it, if you've never had this kind of technology before, guys, don't let it scare you off. It's pretty easy to figure out. So let's take a look at some of the other features that are here. Driver assistance, got some buttons right here between the two air conditioning vents and just a little bit under the infotainment screen. So if you want to turn that auto stop start feature off, there you go. You can turn that off. And again, if you want to know exactly what that is, if you don't know, basically it's going to show you right there what that's basically going to do is give you information about what it does and kind of give a visual demonstration as well. You've got the aviator sitting at a red light. Good driver there. They didn't run the red light. And as far as the button right here goes on the top, that is active park assist. So if you want to use that feature in the aviator, there's how you're going to get to that screen and give you some even more information as far as navigation, as far as what's close by. Very, very nice. A lot of great features here. Okay, guys, let's talk a little bit about how to use the camera washer. We looked at that earlier on the front of the vehicle. Of course, you can see we've got that front camera up. All you're going to do is pull back on the stock right here that you would use to control your windshield wipers front and your rear wiper and here's what's going to happen i'm just going to pull back on that let's see if i can give you a full view of that so i'm pulling back on that right now and as you can see there is what you have now you do have multiple views of course depending on what you need to see and where you would like to see and there we go right there another view now one more little trick here of course, you've got the backup camera. You also have your 360 degree view camera. In the same way, you can go through and get multiple views depending on what you want to see. But let's go back here to the first view that we had. And here's something that's really cool. If you have a dirty rear view camera, as you can see, there goes the water or the windshield washer fluid spraying across just so you can see that that is there. So we've taken a quick look around in the interior, quite a few great features here, but one thing we need to do is get out and do a quick test drive. Let's do that right now. And what about what's under the hood? Well, if you wanna open the hood, I do like the fact that right here you've got the hood release. And notice it says pull times two or pull two times. We're gonna do that twice. And I like the fact that this keeps you from having to go hunting for a hood release. It's just gonna come right up and of course, as you can see, it has one of my favorite features. The first person to say what that is, I'll give you a free Vehicle Visionary t-shirt. And here under the hood, the three liter, six cylinder, 400 horsepower, like I said, made it to that 10 speed automatic transmission, putting that horsepower to the ground, whether it's through two wheel drive or all wheel drive, will definitely get the aviator down the road with absolutely no problem. Okay guys, let's get out on our test drive and I've got to remember to screenshot or maybe get video of the heads up display because I know you probably cannot see that from your vantage point with the GoPro that I have conveniently mounted on the panoramic sunroof. I always like having that large sunroof to give you a better shot. Tell me if you like that angle. Tell me what angles you like when we do these test drives. Do you like for me to mount the camera where it is right now? Would you like for me to put it here in the windshield facing out so you can see the road as I am seeing it? Or what would you like to see? Just tell me in the comments, guys. Always interested in your feedback in that respect to see what you like. So as I'm cruising down the road here in the Aviator, first and foremost, what you would probably expect from a Lincoln of any sort. Very comfortable, very enjoyable to drive. Steering is good and responsive. And while it's not the most powerful vehicle on the road, 
400 horsepower is not light. It definitely will get you down the road very well, whether you've got two-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. But of course, that acceleration sensation with all-wheel drive is going to be a little bit different. Now, this is interesting. This is a road I've never been on before. Being down here in Natchitoches at Jimmy Grange Ford, getting to take a test drive route we've never taken before. We're going to get to experience the handling right here. It's a pretty sharp corner coming up here with the aviator so i'm going to accelerate into this corner not as sharp as it really looked like from a distance back there but i can definitely tell you that it's handling it very well not typical of what we normally get on our Shuri ford test drive route but i have to say everything is very well balanced you do have air suspension adaptive suspension so if you aren't familiar with what adaptive suspension is it literally adapts in an instant to changing road conditions. So the ride quality, as good as it is, is going to remain as good as possible. And it's going to vary, of course, depending on the road surfaces you're on. But I have to say, when I first started the test drive, before I turned the camera on, the roads were definitely anything but smooth. The ride quality was still very enjoyable, very, very enjoyable ride overall as far as traversing over those bumps go. Now we're getting into a little bit kind of uneven area here and still maintaining good ride quality. Handling characteristics are good. Now what about acceleration? Well, this isn't a full size SUV, but you still kind of have that same experience of a larger vehicle really kind of giving you a sensation that it's not as fast as it really is. Of course, having the heads up display right here definitely makes a big difference as far as, yeah, I know I'm going faster than it feels like I'm going. Now we're going to hop out onto the interstate here, so now I get to give you a good opportunity to see what the acceleration is like. Now I'm going to kind of roll into the throttle here a little bit. That's one thing you definitely want to do with an engine like this. Yeah, I'm definitely impressed with the acceleration. Not bad. Not only is it luxurious, it gets down the road nice and fast. And as you can see, there's a great view. I know you can see that really well. The great view right there with the infotainment screen as far as navigation goes. Very easy to see, see where you're going and what you're doing. And I like the fact the speed limit is 75 miles an hour in here, but I'm going a little faster than that without intending to. Honestly, I know a lot of you are going to say, yeah, right, I don't believe that. Yeah, well, you'll just have to take my word for it. But as far as how well the aviator accelerates and gets down the road, it's so smooth. It's one of those kind of vehicles you're going to have to drive it for a little while and get used to it before you find yourself realizing, you know, I can feel the speed, so to speak. At least for someone like me, I can do that. I can basically say to myself, okay, I feel like I'm going this speed, and I'm usually pretty accurate with that once I've been driving a vehicle for long enough to kind of know how it feels. Kind of that seat of the pants feel. A lot of you might not understand what I'm saying about that, so just forget it if you, you don't know. It's no big deal. It just it helps you in your driving experience to literally feel what the vehicle is doing. My racing background has a lot to do with that. So overall, i got to say, I'm really impressed with this Aviator. It has great exterior features and design. It looks as luxurious on the outside as it is on the inside. The interior is comfortable, very easy to navigate, a lot of great features. Tell me down in the comments section as far as things such as wireless charging. Do you like that location or would maybe you like to see that maybe outside here somewhere? Tell me what you think about that. I'm always interested to see what you have to say. And you never know who's watching these videos, guys, and looking through the comments to say, oh, well, here's something we can improve upon when we make changes to the Aviator in upcoming model years. So definitely want to say a special thank you to my friends at Jimmy Grange Ford here in Natchitoches. Definitely had a great time today. We'll definitely be coming back on a more regular basis. And as always, guys, tell me what you want to see me feature here on the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel in future videos. And as always, I appreciate your time. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.